everyone, so we're back with another video on the properties of bonding and this time we're looking at the property of solubility. So how does the structure and bonding of a substance affect how soluble it is? If you're looking to find out more about the properties of bonding and how it affects melting and boiling points, viscosity and volatility, then you can check out my other videos on the Higher Chemistry playlist. Like I said, we're going to look at solubility this time and the key phrase you want to think of whenever the word soluble, solubility, any of those synonyms gets thrown at you in an exam, you want to think of like dissolves like. And it really is as simple as that. A polar substance will dissolve in a polar solvent and a non-polar substance will dissolve in a non-polar substance. When it comes to polar and non-polar solvents, these here are the most common ones that you will be presented with in an SQ exam. The only non-polar solvents you generally get presented with in the higher chemistry exam are any hydrocarbons and the most common one is hexane. So these are some of the names to look out for. For the polar ones, I put propanol, propanone and propanal, but you really could have any alcohol, ketone or aldehyde. They are all polar. The most common polar solvent is of course water. So let's have a look at some molecules and decide which of them would be the most soluble in different solvents. So we're going to start off with looking at whether ammonia or phosphine would be most soluble in water. So when you're looking at solubility, remember the key is like dissolves like, so you really need to first of all start off by identifying if all the things you have are polar or non-polar. So we know that water is polar, most people know that, and without having to draw out the structure. Ammonia and phosphine, we have their structures here, so we're going to have a look to see if they are polar or not. In order to do that, first of all, you need to look up the electronegativities of the atoms that are joined together. So you'll find that on page 12 of the data book clip. And we should find that nitrogen has a greater electronegativity than hydrogen, which means the nitrogen will be delta minus and the hydrogens will all be delta plus. Because this has got a trigonal pyramidal structure and there's polar bonds in it, it will end up having a permanent dipole. So it will be polar. It's got two oppositely charged sides. If we look at phosphine, the electronegativities of phosphorus and hydrogen are exactly the same. So there's no polar covalent bonds in this molecule, which means it won't have a permanent dipole, which means it's non-polar. Okay, so that's our first step, is identifying the polarity of everything we've been, every chemical we've been presented with in the question. Now that we've done that, it's just a simple comparison. So we know like dissolves like, so because water is polar, it means that ammonia is going to be more soluble because it's also polar than phosphine, which is non-polar. So in terms of putting all this together into an exam answer, you would want to say something along the lines of that ammonia is polar and has a permanent dipole, phosphine is non-polar and does not have a permanent dipole, and then as water is polar and light dissolves like, ammonia will be the most water soluble. So getting the light dissolves like phrase in there in your answer at the end is definitely a good thing, just don't use that as an answer on its own. So if you're asked about solubility and you just write like dissolves like, you won't get any credit for that. You have to give some more context to it. Okay, so decide what, whether all your substances you're presented with are polar or non-polar, state if they therefore have permanent dipoles or not, and then give the comparison statement as to which two are actually similar, like which two are both polar or which two are both non-polar. For this next comparison, we're going to make some use of some Unit 2 knowledge again and look at some terpenes and terpenoids. So terpenes are molecules made up of isoprene units, which you would learn about in Unit 2. And terpenoids are a very close relative of terpenes, but they usually tend to have oxygen um, in them instead. So what that means then is they don't tend to have the same polarity. So this time we're going to look to see which of these two um, fragrance molecules is most soluble in hexane. So limonene is all CH atoms, so it's a hydrocarbon, which means that it is non-polar and it has no permanent dipole. The menthol, however, is mostly hydrocarbon, but it does have this hydroxyl group. So it's got this hydroxyl group here, which means it can take part in hydrogen bonding, so it is polar. 
Okay, so limonene is non-polar and doesn't have any permanent dipoles. The menthol is polar because it contains a polar hydroxyl group. Our solvent that we're comparing the two is non-polar, so hexane is a hydrocarbon, so it's also non-polar, which means because like dissolves like, the limonene will be more soluble in hexane than the menthol. So again, in terms of structuring an answer for this, you state what each of the molecules are presented with are. So limonene is non-polar and has no permanent dipole. Menthol is polar as it contains a polar hydroxyl group. And then as our solvent hexane is non-polar and like dissolves like, the limonene will be more soluble in hexane than menthol. If the molecule contains a hydroxyl group, it's better to state that it's got a polar hydroxyl group instead of talking about whether it has a permanent dipole or not. If there's no hydroxyl groups or anything, then just state whether it has a permanent dipole or it doesn't have a permanent dipole. But it's very important to get these key phrases in because the SQA need to know how you know that the molecule is polar or non-polar. It's not enough to just say that it's polar or it's not polar. You need to give a reason to back up your thinking. So for our last comparison, we're going to stick with the menthol, but then I'm going to throw in this bolt thing that always confuses everybody. So this bolt is uh, something called a benzene ring, and it's essentially just a ring of hydrocarbon. But it's a very special hydrocarbon ring that you'll learn more about if you take advanced heart chemistry. But you don't really need to know any more about it than the fact that it's just all carbons and hydrogens. So we can see that they both have hydroxyl groups, so that means they're both going to be polar and they can both form hydrogen bonds with water, which makes them very water soluble. Because they both have the same number of hydroxyl groups, we can't really use the fact that it can form hydrogen bonds to work out then which one's going to be more soluble. What we need to look at is sort of the negative area, which is the parts that won't be able to interact with water. And that's going to be the non-polar parts of the molecule, so anything that's hydrocarbon. So if we look at what parts of the molecule are hydrocarbon, I swear I really wish I had a different coloured pen, I found a red pen. So the areas I'm going to mark in red are all hydrogens and carbon atoms, which means they won't be able to mix with water. So if I colour these bits in, oh, that's great. Well, I just rub them out. So because my red pen has failed me, I've just rubbed out the blue around the hydroxyl groups. I'm going to use the blue to mark out the areas that aren't going to interact with water. So for the phenol, all of this is hydrocarbon. So that's not going to be able to interact with water. And then for the menthol, all of this is hydrocarbon. So that's not going to be able to interact with water. So when we're looking to see which of these two molecules is going to be more soluble in water, we're looking for the one that's going to have the smallest part that's repelling the water. So any of the blue bits I've now coloured in aren't going to interact with water and they're going to actually repel it because they're opposites. The blue parts are non-polar, whereas the water is polar. So because the phenol has the smallest non-polar part, then that will actually be more soluble in water than the menthol because it's got the larger non-polar part. So there's more of that molecule that can't mix with the water than there is in the phenol. So in terms of phrasing an answer, you could write something along the lines of this. So both phenol and menthol are polar due to the presence of their polar hydroxyl groups. So they will both be soluble in polar water as like dissolves like. However, the phenol will be more soluble in water as it has a smaller non-polar hydrocarbon part to its structure. In unit two, you learn about the words hydrophobic and hydrophilic. You could throw those words into this answer. So the hydrocarbon part is hydrophobic, which means it won't be able to mix with the water, whereas the um, hydroxyl groups are hydrophilic, so they can interact with water. So you can use these words as well, um, but always make sure you're mentioning whether it's polar or non-polar, even if you're using the words hydrophilic and hydrophobic as well. So that essentially is everything you need to know on solubility. The key phrase is like dissolves like, and if SK throw a bolt at you, just remember it's just a ring of carbons and hydrogens. So it's non-polar and really nothing to worry about. And if you need to draw it, you just copy it down as exactly as it's shown there. You also get some questions in the multiple choice where it will give you a molecule and ask you to pick which of the following molecules would be the best solvent. You're really looking to see which ones look the most similar in structure 
do they have similar functional groups because if they do they'll be able to interact with each other better and mix in and be soluble. So when you're presented with the word solubility just remember like dissolves like.